My fellow creators and other PC enthusiasts, Nvidia just launched their new RTX 50 series GPUs and the competition is dead. As exciting as this launch is, there is some very exciting things for creators, okay? I don't know if I was as exciting last year, but 5090, oh my goodness. You might want to actually upgrade from 4090 to 5090, and I'll explain why. It's honestly ridiculous, and I think there's so many things we want to talk about and look at with the 50 series launch for creators, so let's get right into it. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt P16, the ultimate creator laptop that doesn't just look good, but lets you bring the workstation performance anywhere. Professional 16-inch 4K OLED display, AMD Ryzen 9 AI CPU, and NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU, and that's just the beginning. Go check out our whole playlist about this device and the full overview in the video description below. Thanks Asus ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. Now let's look at some of the specs of a 5090. If you're new to this channel, this is from creator's point of view, okay? There's gonna be no gaming, I'm not interested in gaming, so if you're interested in that, there's plenty of other channels there. But if you look at it from a different point of view, then that's what I'm excited about, okay? Creators, video, photo, 3D creators, people like that, that's what we're looking at here. Now, if you're looking to build yourself the best bang for buck creator PC, then there's some build guides in the video description below, subscribe and like the video if you haven't already and if you want to reach out I'll always get back to my Minec messages in 24 hours if that's important to you links in the description below some of the specs of 5090 then firstly we're gonna get a boost in the RAM 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 from 6x to 7 that's a huge boost and that's gonna be some of the reason why we're getting the performance improvement next we have DLSS 4 for 3d content and Nvidia says you've got up to four times times the frame generation with the DLSS 4.0. Basically, that is kind of an AI feature. As much as this benefits all the gamers, you know, more frames and things like that, actual creators, this could be interesting as well for some of the 3D creation uh, softwares out there. Unreal Engine, for example, when you're creating things, you want to see more frames, even when you're not rendering it out or when you're working with some of the models or some of the scenes, some of the 3D worlds, you want to see a lot of the frames. And now with DLSS, says 4.0 for creators you're going to see even smoother performance so i'm seeing a lot of 3d studios creators might want to upgrade to 5090 because you've got more RAM and DLSS 4.0, exciting to me. Then power consumption. Nvidia's thinking, well, the power cable can give us 600 watts, so why don't we take the maximum of it? 575 watt power draw for the 5090. That's ridiculous. Bear in mind, if we get the actual board partners version of the cards, most likely they're gonna max it out at 600 watts. Now, you can get up to 150 watts through the actual PCI slot, so potentially you could go even up to 700 and 15 watts so that's gonna be interesting your power supply you might need that knock to a power supply that we recently talked about because it's pulling so much power off oh that's an interesting thought okay I'm gonna give you this bet there's gonna be a company this year 2025 that's gonna make a GPU RTX 5090 that's gonna have two of the 600 watt high power cables for the GPU why not now the founders edition 5090 that Jensen showed off on stage is actually a two slot card which is very interesting we'll talk about the design in a minute the 5080 unfortunately doesn't have any upgrades in the vram still 16 gigabytes and the 5070 ti has 16 gigabytes of vram which is actually increase in vram capacity compared to the 4070 ti the 4070 ti super had 16 gigabytes but the 4070 ti had only 12 so that's good but to me it looks like nvidia is giving all the cards to the gamers that are up to the 5080 right and kind of in terms of vram not much has set changed in terms of capacity because you know if you're not doing massive ai models or massive 3d rendering you can get away with the lower vram capacity although more and more games are requiring more vram you know go check that out from the gamers channels other channels out there but the 5090 nvidia thought we're going to separate that even more from the rest of the cards we're going to make that even bigger of a gap between the 5080 and just give it even more things so for creators i am super excited about that like i'm thinking my creators i might have have to upgrade them to the 5090 just because of some of the features that we're going to talk about now which is video editing
exciting performance. What are some of the things that Nvidia has improved? Number one thing that absolutely kills all the competition is this H.265 422 10 bit decoding and encoding. This just removed Intel from the equation. Let me tell you why. Previously, I've been saying on the channel, look, if you go with AMD, a CPU, maybe AMD platform, just get a cheap Intel Arc, plug it in there so you can get this H.265 10 bit 422 decoding or encoding quick sync. You need that. Now, you don't need Intel quick sync. Nvidia just basically killed Intel quick sync because that is the only codec difference that Intel had that Nvidia doesn't have. From now, if you have Nvidia graphics cards on the 50 series, you can go with AMD platform, AMD CPU, which is actually better than Intel one, okay? Just pure CPU performance. You don't need to go with a Core Ultra 285K, for example, which means now I'm thinking, oh my goodness, do I have to like swap again? I don't want to swap again. I, I just moved all my editors to Intel platform. Obviously, we spent a lot of money on that and I'm probably going to keep them in there. But if you out there are thinking about upgrading AMD platform 5950X or 5950X 3D, we're going to have to check them out. With RTX 5090, it's just uh, going to give you everything. Wow, Intel is in some serious trouble. And that makes me think, what if AMD, because, you know, Lisa and Jensen, they're cousins or something like that. They said in the, you know, maybe Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, Lisa said to Jensen, uh, Jensen, listen, uh, <clears throat> how much would it take if we paid for you to give support for the 10-bit 422H265 codex? So then Intel would, you know, be in trouble. Putting this place out of commission. What if Lisa paid Jensen to actually put that feature in? Because why haven't they done it in previous generation? Like, they could have done it. AMD, obviously, they know that their, you know, GPUs and things, they aren't really for creators, really. They want to get the other market cap of gamers and more affordable, uh, you know, GPUs under their wing. I don't know, okay? Just spreading rumors that I've never heard before. Just mulling over business problems, examining opportunities, exchanging rumors. Spreading gossip. If we are looking at the actual decoding performance, Nvidia says that it can decode 8 4K 60 frames per second 10 bit 422 H.265 codex. That means that if you just recorded a multicam, you can put eight of these and it will breeze through it. That is absolutely ridiculous. Now, on the other hand, I kind of wish that it could do that at 120 frames per second, but for some reason, I've seen there is some kind of a gap in the hardware market of decoding decoding footage more than 60 frames per second. The only hardware that I can see that does it better is Apple. For some reason, when I'm using the M4 Max, it actually decodes 120 frames per second footage on mirrorless camera H.264 or 5 quite well, like drops a lot less frames than Intel QuickSync and so on. It could be hardware lever, actual decoder, how many frames per second it can do. But regardless, that is some serious flipping awesome performance for that decoder. And now there is actual improvement in decoders. Now, if you remember from 40 80 and above, you had dual encoders, decoders, dual media engines on the GPU. On 5090, you've got two decoders and three encoders, which Nvidia says is up to 60% faster than the 4090 and four times faster than 3090. Just pretty bonkers. But video editing, decoding, encoding performance is ridiculous on the 5090. 5080 gets dual of both, not three times encoders, but two encoders, two decoders, and then the 4070 and below, they're going to get a single encoder encoder and decoder. So now there's even bigger gap when going higher and higher. Interestingly, I'm wondering if the 4090 actually had three encoders and three encoders and maybe Nvidia is keeping the pro cards, you know, the RTX A7000 cards, whatever they're going to be called, because they're not going to call them Quadro anymore, but the pro cards, maybe that is going to be the fully utilized die unbind where you have three encoders and three decoders don't quote me on that most like that's going to be that because the 6000 compared to the 4090 uh, actually had i think three and two, if I'm not mistaken. Now, Nvidia has improved their encoders and decoders. The encoder is now ninth gen and the decoder is sixth gen. And the ninth gen encoder is now 5% more efficient, which means that at the same file size, it can give 5% better quality. So your videos are gonna have the same file size, but better quality, or it can also do 
5% smaller file sizes in certain codecs, but at the same quality, which is very, very nice. And the sixth gen decoder can actually decode twice the speed of H.264, which is pretty impressive again. Now, I mentioned the Pro cards, but I don't think NVIDIA has yet released the Pro cards. So the cards that actually are, you know, the quarter cards that NVIDIA doesn't call Quadro anymore. I don't know what they're called. RTX 6000 Ada was a bit confusing. So this is probably going to be RTX 7000 Ada, something like that. They're going to be very, very interesting because I know that NVIDIA previously has left the full utilization of the whole die to the actual quarter cards. They're probably going to have higher clock speeds and now even probably better cooling design. I'm wondering if they're going to pull the cooling down and what are they going to do? It's very, very exciting because the 5090 has 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Previously, the Pro card had 48 gigabytes. Are they going to have 60 gigabytes VRAM or something like that? So for people who want AI models or want to build an absolute supercomputer to do some very large language model AI stuff or 3D, those Pro cards whatever NVIDIA is going to call them, they're going to be quite impressive, especially on the VRAM capacity. And I'm so excited to see what they're going to be. Then obviously AI. AI is a big thing. Everyone's talking about it. They slap it on PSUs from all the way to pencils, AI pen, and so on. There's a lot of stuff that it can do with AI. There's got AI engines inside and you know a uh, NVIDIA is the AI leader. So whatever AI thing, it can do a lot of it, okay? In terms of the actual review of the card. I wonder what type of AI benchmark would you like to see it actually do? Sometimes we see some, you know, AI, how many tops it can do. But in your workflow, what is the actual most important thing? I'd love to know in the comment section below. Let me know. Now, in terms of physical design, the one that Jensen showed on the stage is a two slot card. Two slot card. That is weird because our previous RTX 4090s were four slot cards. Okay, the founder's edition was a little bit smaller, but the others were four slot cards. Now we've gone down in size, yet a lot higher in power draw. 575 watts. Okay, let's be reasonable. They're going to be 600 watt power draw that they're pulling there. How on earth are they cooling this? If you look at the actual cooling design of that card, the interesting thing is they're having a full pass through from both sides of the card. So they're going to have this PCB in the middle and then the pass through not on one side of the card, but on both sides, which is very, very interesting. Now, how are they going to have the HDMI and video outputs on one side of this? They're probably going to run the cables like from the front or from the back somehow, but they're having a full pass through on both sides. That is genius, genius design. And that would mean that your actual, you know, RAM and MOSFETs for around the actual CPU socket, they're going to get pretty good airflow as well, even though it's hotter airflow is better than no airflow and PC cases that have a chimney design are actually a lot better than when the air comes from the front, which creates a very interesting uh, airflow design option now, because now it kind of makes sense if the tower air coolers are kind of chimney as well, you know, like we did on the Oppenheimer build where our Threadripper had chimney design. So it pulled the air from the bottom and up. Very, very interesting. We have 3D vapor chamber. This looks very, very interesting. I think we should be getting one in. First time, founder's edition, I'm hoping. Uh, it's going to be super, super exciting. Now, in terms of availability, they're saying that the first 5090 cards are available the end of January. 30th or something like that. And then the rest of them kind of get released February and March and so on. The RTX 5090 is now $2,000 for the Founders Edition one. If you remember, 1490 was 1500 or 1600, was it something like that? 1500, if I believe. So that means that they've put the 5090 even higher than the 1490. The RTX 5080 is $1,000. 4070 Ti is 750 and the 4070 550. Now, how do these perform compared to the 40 series? I'm excited to test and check them out. Looking at some of the cards, 40 series cards might be the better bang for buck if they go down in price. If they keep the same price, obviously not, but we'll have to see. Which one are you most excited about? The 5090 to me seems like the best price, the performance almost as creators, just because it offers so much more than the rest of the pack. 4080, 4070 Ti, 4070, it seems a little bit more confusing to recommend or kind of find their place. But 
5090 for creators who just want the best PC. There we go. I'll meet you in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you.